The International Energy Agency says that fossil fuel imports have declined in more than 100 countries. More than 100 countries, and yet we are still seeing trillions of dollars in subsidies into the fossil fuel industry. In spite of the fact that these countries are importing less and less. Now, you see kind of the problem here, the contradiction really where fossil fuel imports are declining and yet subsidies are not. It's very clear subsidies for fossil fuels are actually higher than those for renewable energy and it doesn't make any sense. Anyhow, in its executive summary to the annual renewable energy report, the International Energy Agency said global renewable power capacity is expected to double between now and 2030, increasing by 4,600 gigawatts. That is the equivalent of adding China, the European Union, and Japan's power generation capacity combined to the global energy mix. That, my friends, is disruption. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Solar accounts for almost 80% of the global increase that we're going to see over the next five years, says the IEA. This is followed by wind, hydropower, bioenergy and geothermal. Now, of course, a little bit misleading here because a big part of the reason that renewables will double is because we'll be able to use a lot more of what we make today by installing batteries all across the world. So these mega batteries will make an enormous difference to right now we're, we're wasting hundreds of billions of dollars of electricity. It's being generated often during the day or when it's really, really windy. And we just don't have the capacity in most places to store it all. So therefore, we just curtail it. We waste it. All these big batteries are changing that. In more than 80% of countries worldwide, renewable power capacity will grow faster between 2025 and 2030 than it did over the previous five-year period, said the IEA. However, challenges including grid integration, supply chain vulnerabilities, and financing and governments like the Trump administration are also increasing. Carbon Brief has taken the data from the IAA and put it into this chart to show you exactly what is happening. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Now, if you look at this list, you can see without renewable energy, uh, more than half of the UK's electricity would have relied on fossil fuel imports. And I mean, without the new renewable energy that's been added to the UK. You can really see here uh, the countries that were able to cut their dependence on fossil fuels. The, 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 the decline in their dependence is absolutely astronomical. And you can see Romania, Bulgaria, China, their dependence on fossil fuels now is actually relatively low. The 2025 Renewables report shows that more than 100 countries have cut their dependence on fossil fuel imports, says Clean Technica, and saved hundreds of billions of dollars by continuing to invest in renewables. This is despite the global, basically, um, the United States administration, uh, fossil fuel companies, Toyota, really pushing against renewables and not to mention mainstream media, the advertising we're seeing, a lot of negativity coming out about renewables, which is crazy, saying that that's what's increasing power prices when actually that's not the case at all. The UK, Germany and Chile have reduced their need for imported coal and gas by around a third since 2010, mainly by building wind and solar power plants and installing batteries. Denmark has cut its reliance on fossil fuel imports by nearly half over the same period. Renewable expansion allowed these nations to collectively avoid importing 700 million tonnes of coal and 400 billion cubic metres of methane in 2023, which is equivalent to about 10% of global consumption. Now, this has meant that the fuel importing countries saved more than $1.3 trillion between 2010 and 2023 that would have otherwise been spent on imported fossil fuels. That means those countries massively improved their trade balance. The Renewables 2025 report compares recent trends in renewable expansion to an alternative low renewable energy source scenario in which the increase in local renewable energy did not take place. 
Roughly 80% of this new renewable capacity was built in nations that rely on coal and gas imports to generate electricity. So in other words, countries that rely on importing gas and coal to generate electricity, they're basically the ones that are trying to move away from that the fastest. And that's got to be a bit of a warning to countries like Australia who are so dependent on coal exports because those coal export, well, the demand for that coal is going to crash. In total, the IEA identified 107 countries that had reduced their dependence on fossil fuel imports for electricity generation because of their transition to renewables. 38 cut their reliance on electricity from imported coal and gas by more than 10 percentage points, and eight saw that share drop by more than 30 percentage points. In its report, the IEA said that renewables inherently strengthen energy supply security because they generate electricity domestically while also improving economic resilience in those countries. The countries that previously relied on methane gas exports from Russia, being Bulgaria, Romania, and Finland, they were all dependent on Russian methane. But they've all brought their reliance on imported fossil fuels close to zero in recent years by building out renewables. So maybe the war in Russia has helped those countries to kind of say, well, we need to change. We can't be relying on Russia anymore. It's too it's crazy. And why not? In the UK, where there has been opposition to renewables from right-wing political parties, as per Clean Technica, the IEA says reliance on electricity generated with imported fossil fuels has dropped from 45% to less than 25% in the past 10 years, thanks mainly to the growth of wind and solar power. Without those renewables, 60% of electricity generation in the UK would have depended on imported fossil fuels. The other thing worth mentioning is the IEA says these local renewable energy projects also created thousands, if not millions of jobs in countries where they installed these projects. The IEA's Renewables 2025 report, which I'll link to in the description, deals with the transportation and heat sectors. For transportation, it's said renewable energy consumption in transport is expected to rise 50% by 2030. The largest share of this growth, 45%, will come from renewable electricity used for electric cars, especially in China and Europe. In other words, the IEA is predicting a massive increase in EV sales over the next five years. So I think this is a really positive report. 107 countries have reduced their dependence on fossil fuels over the past two years. And it's meaning they're in a better financial position. They're less dependent on fossil fuel companies and that gives them energy security. Many of these countries will completely end their reliance on fossil fuels imported from other countries within the next five years. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now, I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.